Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another installment of the Mondeo series. In the last video, you would have seen that we got the subframe um, rust treated, painted, and polybushed. But now we have to get the car ready to accept the subframe, which means rust treatment, under seal, and anything else that needs doing before the subframe can go back up and suspension can go back in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out to the car and talk you through and show you exactly what the situation is and what we're gonna do to rectify it, uh, and then we'll get started. All right, so if we get ourselves under the Mondeo, I just want to show you uh, what sort of state it's in. It's not awful, I'll be honest, it's not the worst thing we've ever seen. But there is a few areas, as you can see, probably up there in the strut tower, where I just, whilst I've got it all out, I just want to hit it with a wire wheel, back tan it, and then cover it with something, either spray paint or, uh, I've got some under seal, I don't know whether I'm going to do under seal yet. But, as you can see up there, it's quite a bit of rust, it's just surface rust really. But before it gets any worse, I kind of want to hit it now just as like a preventative thing for the future. Kind of makes sense to do it. There's a couple of little spots like here, a little bit here, and there's a little bit at the front just there. So I've got a wire wheel attachment that I've got on my drill. So I'm just going to literally come in here and just hit these few spots real quick, back tan it up, and add just a little bit of protection on top uh, before we put everything back together. It's pretty much the same story on the other side. And there's also kind of a little bit underneath but not really much at all actually it's quite clean under here for a for a ford this little guy right here is going to be our best friend today i always use this little cup drill attachment um, on my drill it just makes life so much easier than using like a manual wire wheel um, i highly recommend getting a set of these you can buy them on amazon and on ebay um, great pieces of kit these i've also gone ahead and got myself a new pair of glasses these are sort of fancy ones that just got like a sponge I guess you call it a seal, which seals around your eye, like a pair of goggles, like a pair of swimming goggles. Because, I'll tell you a little, quick little story. I was under the Mondeo probably a couple of weeks ago now. I put a pair of glasses on, just a normal pair of um, like protective glasses, my pink ones that I usually wear. Put them on, thought I'd crawl under the car. Um, I just wanted to inspect things, see how bad it was before I started today's video. Now, I was under there, I literally touched the underside, underside of the car once with my finger piece of rust fell down, landed on my cheek, just below the glasses there, rolled under the glasses where the gap is, and went straight into my eye. And I was not impressed whatsoever because I specially put glasses on to stop that from happening, yet it still happened. So I've got these glasses, I've found them on Amazon, and I've got like a, um, like a sponge pad. So when you put them on, they look a bit silly, to be honest. You kind of look like you're about to go swimming. Don't know if you can see that, but it sort of seals around my eye. So if anything falls on my cheek, it's not going to roll under like it did before. So hopefully, apart from looking like a bit of a numpty, these will protect me today. Right, so I've been at this for about 20 minutes now and I've attacked as much of the rust as I possibly can with the wire wheel um, on the drill combination. You can see it looks a little bit better than it did. I just managed to get rid of all the loose stuff, all the little flaky bits I managed to take off. Same up here, you can see where I've taken quite a bit off right there. That was all uh, covered in paint but it was really flaky so I've taken all that off. And it's revealed all of the rust and there's quite a bit of it so I have now got my vac tan out over there on top of the car. Um, I'm going to mix that up, get that applied so that I can leave that for tonight because it's now about 8 o'clock. Now while I'm here I am just going to quickly address this right here. I know a lot of people are going to be asking why haven't you done it yet? Is it going to be done? Like how are you going to do it? I'm still not 100% decided yet whether I get someone to come and do it or whether I learn to do it myself or whether I leave it for now and take it to a shop once this is all back on the road and everything's back together. I'm not actually 100% sure yet. Um, I got a quote for a mobile welder to come out and do this, and it was 200 quid. And that's 200 quid that I'm, at the moment, haven't really got. I'm kind of trying to put it off for as long as I possibly can um, and decide at the very last minute what I'm gonna do. Which is a little bit annoying because that was the whole reason, that arch was the whole reason that I've started this journey now. Um, so to put it off, to leave it till last, um, is not really what I wanted to do, but here's what it is. Mm -hmm. 
Right, well there we have it. It's got dark now, as you can probably see. It's pretty much pitch black out here, but I have vac tanned both sides. You can probably see up in this one. I've covered all the rust I could possibly find. You can see it's turned it that dark colour, which is good. That's what we want to see. I'm going to leave this now for tonight um, because I'm just going to let that vac tan go off. And then in the morning, I'm going to come out here and I'm going to spray it with either the tough black paint that I use on the subframe or I did buy six cans of um, under seal. I've never used that stuff before. Um, I'm a bit weary about putting it over rust because I know there's still rust under there. Um, so to put it straight over that, even though it's been vac tanned, I'm a little bit dubious of doing that. Um, just in case it comes through in the future, you won't be able to see it come through because it'll be covered in under seal. So I may paint it, I'm not entirely sure yet, we'll decide that in the morning. I'll catch you guys back here in the morning. Right, good morning everyone, it's the next day now. I've left the vac tan overnight to cure. I've had a quick little peek under there and it looks a lot better than it did. Um, I just want to remind you before I show you what it looks like, we're not going for perfection, we're not going for like a full restoration. I'm just trying to stop the rust from spreading a little bit um, by treating it, sealing it, and uh, hopefully that will prolong this car and give it a few more years of life than it would have done had I have not done the rust treatment. That's kind of the gist of, of what I'm trying to do wanted to get that out there. In a perfect world you would grind everything back um, and then treat it properly and then go through all the stages but I'm not about that so I'll quickly turn the camera around so you can see what we look like. So this is the passenger side and I'll just show you the patches that we've treated and what they now look like. So this was one. You can still see the sort of orangey tinge of rust underneath there but it's you can see where it's uh, like changed it back to metal and it feels a lot better. It's coated as well. It dries clear this stuff, which is really strange. But there's a look up there as well. You can see where it's turned black. That was a big patch right here. It was a massive patch of rust. So let's treated that. Got all these bits around here, around here. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out, to be honest. So you can see it looks a lot better than it did. So I'm happy to see all over this now. There's no holes, which is a good thing. And the other side looks pretty much the same. And so what that means now is I can go ahead and seal in um, that rust treatment with an undercoat and a little bit of paint as well. I'm going to use paint, just normal black tough paint, right in the top of the struts where the strut top will go. Um, because I don't want to put under seal up there. I don't want to mess with where the top mount's going to sit up there. So I'm going to put spray paint right at the top. And then in the actual wheel arch, I'm going to put some under seal. I bought six cans of it, I'll show you in a sec. So I'm going to spray it all up in the arches, all up where the subframe's going to sit as well. Um, just to protect it a little bit. Right, so these are the two tins of stuff I'm going to use. This is the under seal here. Um, I literally just went on eBay and typed in heavy duty under seal, and this is like the first thing that turned up. Um, I've got a deal of six cans, so I've got another five cans sitting up there. Wasn't sure how much I was going to need, but I figured I'd get a few just in case I end up doing the front or something in the future. Don't know how well it's going to apply, how well it's going to stick. Never used it before, so this is a bit of a trial and error thing. And then I've just got a tin of um, Simon is tough black paint to do like I said up in the strut towers where I don't want a thick layer of stuff I'm gonna put this and then where it doesn't matter if it's thick we're gonna put this it says that it's corrosion proof waterproof stone proof and salt proof and it says it's a durable high impact protective coating so hopefully this stuff's gonna be man enough hopefully it will stand up to the test of time so we're gonna give this a go right so all up in there, where the strut tower is going to sit, you can see where these marks are. Up there, that's where the top mount sits. I'm going to use black paint up there, just because um, I don't want to build up a layer in here and then the top mount won't sit in there properly. So I'm going to go thin layer of black paint up there, and then from here downwards, it is all going to have the undercoat on it because it doesn't matter. Um, this is all covered up anyway with a un like a wheel arch liner, but I want to know that underneath that wheel arch liner, it's not rotting away on me. I'm also going to spray these rear crash bar supports here. These were really quite rusty. That that um, vac tan's really done a good job on the end of these, but it's really taken away all that rust. I'm just going to spray them with black just to give them a coat or something. You don't see them; they're behind the bumper, so it doesn't matter if they're black or blue. So I kind of got a little bit carried away with the uh, the black spray paint. My original plan was to just do where the top mounts are going to go, like I explained a couple of times. Um, I ended up just covering pretty much the whole wheel well in both sides. I figured you can't have too many layers of stuff, so with the vac tan and self primed, this on top, and then with the under seal on top of that, um, it's the most protected it's probably going to be. So I figured I might as well use up this can. It's now empty. 
So time for the under seal. Okay, so this is what we currently look like in here. I've, like I said, I've sprayed most of this down with the um, the black tough paint. As you can see, I hit all the rusty spots, or the spots that I've treated with um, the rust treatment anyway. It's looking pretty good up there, but I'm quite happy with how it looks so far. Although, it has just started to rain. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. But I don't know if that's going to stop this evening, which is not good. Because I was hoping to get the under seal on. I might still be able to do it because it's under the arch anyway. So the rain shouldn't be too much of a problem. Right, so as I said, this is my first time using this. The hole on the actual like spray can on the nozzle is really small, just like a normal paint can. So I don't know how it's, if it's going to come out thick or thin or whether it's going to be lumpy or whatever. So I'm just going to start spraying, see how we get on. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Right, well, two cans of under seal later. I've gone through one on each side and I've pretty much done the hole underneath the car. I'll show you it in a second. I figured whilst I was in there and I'm doing each like wheel well, I might as well just do the whole rear of the car whilst I've got the subframe off and all that stuff. Kind of just let loose, went crazy. Somehow got up my face, don't know how. It's all over my face actually, overspray. I was wearing glasses, but there you go. This stuff worked ever so well. Right, hopefully I better show you this all right, I got my torch. As you can see, <laughs> the hole underneath the car is now a lovely, at the minute it's a gloss black, but I think it's gonna dry more satin black than, uh, than gloss black, but it's freshly coated on there. Hopefully the light is doing it justice. All up there, all the way around the arch, all along the inside, like so. And then if we crawl underneath the car, you can see <laughs> this is where the spare tire will sit, or spare wheel. That's all coated, frame rails coated, all underneath of the frame coated as you can see and it's exactly the same story on the other side everything's coated I missed a little bit here which I didn't notice but everything is now under sealed everything is coated it looks so much better and it's good to know that that's now protected so when that dries that'll be chip resistant and uh, hopefully prevent further corrosion on this thing this is the uh, passenger side as you can see same story just black and shiny Looks really good. Right, so coming out of the darkness and the rain, which is now about to come down, we can actually come into the shed for the last job before we can put the subframe back in. I don't know if I explained it in the last video, I think I did, but the sway bar or the or the anti-roll bar, as people keep reminding me that they're called in the UK, that needs uh, a little bit of love before it can be put back on the subframe, before that can be put back into the car. It's quite rusty, uh, all the paint was flaking off, I'll show you it in a second so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but it was really not in very good condition. I'm replacing the bushings, as you know. Um, I've got the poly bushes to go on the anti-roll bar. So I wanted to clean it up, paint it, do all the stuff I've done to the rest of the parts that are going back on Monday. Just so I know that it's in uh, good condition and it sort of matches in with everything else. So, we've got to strip down the old paint, get rid of as much of the rust as possible. I'm not going to show you too much of it because it's probably quite boring, uh, but I'm going to get that done now. Sway bar is living in here. Just tucked it away for now. Right, here she is. We'll get her up on the workbench. So, as you can see, this is the condition it's here, and you can see rusty here, rusty here where the paint has flaked off. All rusty here, rusty here, and then you can see where I've started to attack it a little bit. You can see the shiny metal there. I used a uh, angle grinder with a flap disc on, and I've started to take the paint off. I'm going to carry on with that and do the rest of the bar that way, and then I need to do just do this corner here, and then I'll explain why we have a hose clip on there afterwards. So after about 20 minutes of uh, grinding and paint removal, we now have the anti-roll bar in a fairly decent condition. As you can probably see, all the paint that was on it is removed, all the black paint. 
which this originally came in, is gone. Um, I've also attacked the rust with a flap disc as much as I can. You can see I've taken down as much of that as I possibly can. I don't want to get it perfect. I'm not that bothered about perfection. But it wouldn't be a Savage Garage video without some more vac tan, would it? So I'm going to treat the areas that are the most rusty. So just around here, a little bit here, and then a little bit on this end as well. Just going to hit it with some vac tan. I might as well do it. You know, it makes sense to do it now. Just so that this rust doesn't come back and peel the paint off that I'm going to be putting back on it. Um, treat it paint it, all good. Right, well we've got, oh God, I'm a bit blue. Um, I've got the, the anti-roll bar painted completely. It has got a nice satin black finish on it, as you've seen. I've given that three coats now. Oh, the lighting today is awful, sorry, it's so sunny. The little brackets that hold the actual bushings on, they're a bit rusty and crusty, so I'm gonna clean them up, which gives me the ability to use this for the first time. I bought this not long ago, and I've never used it before. I've got a wire wheel on there. So I'm going to try and clean these up on here and see how we get on. As you can see, they look rusty and crusty like the rest did. So I'm going to try and clean these up and paint these as well. Okay, so we finally have everything on the subframe and the anti-roll bar painted and ready to go back together. I'll show you everything in a second. The only thing I need to do is put the anti-roll bar bushings on and then reattach the anti-roll bar to the subframe and then we can get it back up under the car and get it mounted properly. It's going to be exciting to see things going back onto the car because I feel like up until this point I've just been stripping things off, stripping things off, but now we can actually move forwards and start putting things back on the Monday once and for all. So This is currently the setup. As you can see, I've got the subframe with the new bushings all painted down there. I've got the anti-roll bar here ready for its bushings, which are right here. As you can see, these are the Flowflex ones that I got off eBay. I actually had to slightly modify them. I found that they were too big. When I put them around the anti-roll bar, they were sort of playing them, uh, like side-to-side -side play. So what I ended up doing was chopping a little bit out of the bottom so that there's more of a gap so that they close more and they actually fit really nicely now, so that's them. I also went ahead and painted the brackets, um, gave them the rust treatment and the paint like everything else, so they're all nice and new. And then we've got two brand new Ford bolts to bolt them down with. Um, the old ones are really rusty, and as you remember, I had to drill one out, so new bolts as well. So this is all going back together. I've got my rubber grease ready, just to help ease things back together. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting all this back on the subframe. Alright, so I have got the anti-roll bar bolted onto the subframe with its new bushings that you've just seen and its new bolts. As you can see it's all in there, nice and firm, got plenty of movement, obviously good movement, no side to side play or anything like that. There's one more thing left to do and that is on these anti-roll bars from factory they usually come with a little collar that sits around here right next to where the bushing is which stops the anti-roll bar from moving this way so if you look at the minute I can push it sort of side to side and there's a little collar on there usually which stops it and locks it there's one on each side one that side one this side but they both broke off when I was cleaning this thing they were rusty and they both broke off so I need to find a different method of locking that in I'll show you quickly what I mean this is what was originally on the anti-roll bars this is what they come with from factory it's kind of like a little um, a little clamp I'm not really sure how it stays on there 
it doesn't sort of slide across there's no locking mechanism on it I think it's just really tight once it's on there but as you can see this one broke in half and that one broke in half as well and these would essentially just sit around the bar like so like that and it just stops the bar from moving side to side um, I don't really know how important they are but they're on there so I want something on there to replace them so I've come up with these <laughs> essentially just a hose clamp um, but ones I can make really tight and I'm going to sit them on there like so and literally just tighten them up and they'll grip onto the bar and just stop it from moving side to side hopefully that's the plan anyway so I went for 21 to 23 mil because this bar is 22 um, so I figured that that's, that's dead in between so I need to put them on there and tighten however <laughs> I went to put these on there before I put the bushings on because I was going to slide them over and move them around where now I can open them up and put them on but I don't really want to ruin that circle that they've got on there but I might not have a choice because I don't really want to have to take those bolts out again <laughs> that is how they look they don't look quite factory but they'll serve their purpose they are solid on there they're not going to go anywhere I'll put some Loctite on the threads as well so they won't undo themselves hopefully that is the subframe done ready to go back onto the Mondeo so I think we're going to go ahead and do that okay so moving on to getting this subframe back into the car I did clean up the bolts and if you saw that earlier in the video I cleaned up all the threads and I even went ahead and vacuumed tanned the heads probably way too overkill but I figured I'd do it while they were there so they're not rusty anymore I am going to use some Loctite I can't find my blue Loctite but I have got red and I know that red is really strong and it's meant to be used on stuff that you don't want to come out but I don't really want the subframe to come out anymore I want the subframe bolts to stay in so I'm not too worried about using the red Loctite on them this is going to be a little bit tricky doing it on my own I'm going to use the jack to jack it up just the same way that I took it down I'm going to try and jack up in position um, I've got then four little washers to sit on top of the poly bushes to put on and put the bolts in and that's going to be all on my own so this is going to be fun These subframe bolts get torqued down to 120 newton meters, so I've got my torque wrench set to that, and I'm just going to tighten them all up. But there we go I think that's probably a pretty good place to leave this I managed to get the driver's side strut in it's all tightened down all the arms are attached um, it's quite weird to see it back in there it's been without them for so long that it seems strange to have them back in but it's great that they're back in now in the next video we should be sorting this rust and then putting together the rest of the stuff I'm really happy with how the subframes come out how the poly bushes look and, and all the painting and rust treatment and everything we've done so far looks really good in there so I'm very happy with it if you guys enjoyed the video make sure you give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe for future content thank you for the support so far I'll see you in the next one.